The most urgent task we have is really dealing with the opioid epidemic and its consequences. Uh, you know, we are, we have about 120 people dying every day in the United States as a result of a drug overdose. You know, we haven't seen this kind of mortality in a long time. Uh, we, we are now approaching mortality rates that um, uh, kind of parallel the height of the AIDS epidemic. And so, so you know, we're losing far too many people and it compels me every day. And, Every day I think about, you know, what can I do to make a difference? What can I do to make a difference in, in this epidemic and, and to save people's lives? Part of our goal here is widespread criminal justice reform and making sure that people who are encountering the criminal justice system are actually referred and deferred to the treatment system to get help and support for, for their disorders. And it's really been remarkable, I think. Our local law enforcement is talking about public health strategies and they know that we need good prevention and good treatment and they want alternatives other than just arresting and incarcerating people. So we all know we're seeing a dramatic increase in heroin use across the country. and That's been driven by the overprescribing of prescription pain medication. When we have law enforcement folks who understand that every life is worth saving um, and that we need to do a better job at getting people into care and treatment, um, I think that's, that's really incredibly important. I guess you for feeling of, that's cool, I just yeah, saved somebody's just life. Saved you know, and you're standing around looking at your buddies, and then the, 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 the administration comes in and it's like, hey, that's pretty cool. And so, you know, it kicks in like, hey, we're actually going to give this person a second chance. We're going to give this 14, 15, 16 year old kid who may have accidentally one time done it a second chance to get into that treatment path. You want, at a community level, to hold up people in recovery because that's what the hope is. That's what the person who with addiction needs to know on the other side that, that there is hope for me if I go to treatment. One of the things that I love about this field is watching and listening to the radical transformation of people's lives when they get care. And, you know, listening to their testimonials, listening to the testimonials of their family who get their loved ones back, you know, as a result of treatment. You watch people just develop before your eyes and reach their full potential. Your reach is a huge support system. I'm here every day doing something with somebody. <laughs> I wouldn't be here right now, for real, for real, if it wasn't for them. My recovery process is, is my main focus right now. I'm just one of 23 million people uh, in recovery, and, and I've often said, you know, I couldn't imagine 26 years ago you know, I'd be the president's advisor on, on national drug control policy. And, but, but, but I think that, you know, my story is not unique. You know, it just really shows what treatment and recovery are all about and how people can be restored to really full and happy and productive lives, you know, when we give them the care and support that they deserve. I hope to use my office and my story to kind of champion and encourage and empower other people to be open and honest and public about their own recovery and their own struggles. Well if he can do it, we can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> That's real.